to start off, um, one question had to do with the statute of limitations and how, how much time can you sit on a um, on a case that you know, you know, your tenant breached that lease or your tenant caused damage to your property? Well, generally speaking, if you're going to sue with regard to a written or even an oral lease agreement, you have four years from the date of what's called your cause of action or more simply the breach that occurred so you have four years to bring the lawsuit not not to win the case not to get to final judgment not to complete the appeal you have four years to bring the lawsuit to court and so naturally we don't recommend waiting that long uh for a couple of reasons number one uh, you're going to get fuzzy with the facts. And unless everything is absolutely documented perfectly, you're probably going to have to use your memory for some of these facts. It's best to do it within the first year. Uh, the second issue has to do with your ability to find the tenant. Generally speaking, uh, you can find a tenant uh, within the first year. Uh, most tenants don't leave the state. A few do. Uh, but if you have no idea where this tenant is, you can't sue them because you can't find them. And they have to be personally served with notice of your lawsuit. So while you do have up to four years, we certainly don't recommend that you wait that long. Um, all right, so the, the next couple of questions has to have to do with recovering a judgment you've already won. So you've gone to court. The, the matter is, is, has been closed out by the judge. You have a judgment, but you don't know what to do with it. And so liquidating a judgment uh, can be complicated. Um, generally speaking, if you want, let's say you've won a $5,000 judgment, you want attorney fees and court costs and, and it's accruing interest, but you've had this judgment on the shelf for 10 years. Um, it's still a good judgment. Um, unfortunately, th th there's a procedure that you have to revive a judgment after 10 years. Uh, but the truth is you can keep a judgment alive for as long as the defendant is alive. Um, so uh, even a 10-year-old judgment is still perfectly collectible. But let's say you're within a couple years uh, of that judgment. There's a couple of steps that you want to do uh, to begin the collection process. Now, one thing we were asked specifically is, how can I garnish wages? I want to take my judgment and, and take it to the employer and say, pay my judgment, please. Well, in Texas, you can't do that. And so you are limited uh, in your ability to collect your judgment in that you cannot garnish, garnish any wages. What you can do is you could potentially seize uh, real property, uh, especially if it's not somebody's homestead. Um, but if they own a piece of property and it's not where they are living, uh, you can actually seize that property and, and have it auctioned uh, in a constable sale to cover the value of your judgment. You can also seize assets in an account, a uh, bank account, savings in a checking account, uh, or, or potentially good uh, access uh, that you would have to, to recovering uh, of some of your judgment funds, uh, particularly if you've gotten that information from uh, the application process. And in the application, uh, you had to pay the application fee with a check written from an account that they own. And so these are parts of your uh, intake when you're getting new tenants. Uh, you have to have a savings account or a checking account or both. Um, then you have a, a, a means to collect uh, after a judgment, right? If you know they have an account, uh, it is possible to seize the funds in that account. Uh, finally, there's personal property. So if they own a boat or a motor motorcycle or they own more than one vehicle, those assets could potentially be seized. If they're registered in a given county, you can file your judgment uh, through an abstract and what's called a writ of execution. Uh, and you can use these documents against uh, property that they own that is registered in, in any given Texas county. And so there are there are mechanisms to collect and generally speaking if you really get somebody's attention uh, they'll they'll come to you and say hey 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 don't don't take my stuff I'll, I'll pay the judgment I've accumulated the funds where do I send it so you can release the judgment against me. And so uh, you know sometimes immediately after a court case someone especially a, a, a tenant who has run out of funds cannot pay a judgment 
perhaps later down the line uh, they'll have assets. Uh, another good thing that I always recommend to clients is if you file an abstract of judgment uh, with identifying information, the last four of a social, the last four of a Texas driver's license, so that somebody can be particularly identified, um, you may find that five, six, or seven years down the line after you've gotten your judgment, because you've abstracted, when they want to buy a house in the county where you live and where they may still live, um, they're not going to be able to jump over the hurdle of your judgment lien. And a lender is going to be hesitant to loan money to somebody who's got a judgment lien on them because it potentially could put their collateral at risk. And because of that, abstracting a judgment is a good way in the future to collect uh, on these judgments because you may get that knock on the door from somebody who wants to buy a house or pull out some other loan who cannot until they clear your judgment lien. And so collecting judgments can be complicated, but you do have recourse. Uh, and if you have questions, you, know, you need to talk to somebody with experience in this uh, in this arena. All right. So send me your questions. If you've got questions about uh, landlord-tenant law and there's something you're a little shaky on or something you just need a little clarification, uh, post something in our Facebook group. Shoot me an email at uh, ernie.garcia at attorneyeg.com. Uh, it's right there. Uh, or post something in our Facebook group. Uh, if you're not a member yet, join our Facebook group. We look forward to you. Uh, uh, if you look on Facebook, um, we are Texas Landlords. Uh, finally, if uh, you want to call, that's our number. Feel free to call us, and we'll be happy to help in any way that we can. And so keep your questions coming. I'm happy to answer as many questions as I can.